YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my weekly entertainment wrap up for September 17th to 23rd. This week I read two books, I watched four TV shows, and I listened to one book. The first book this week was recommended by Sana over at Books and Quills for the Space Readathon, and that was Interstellar Cinderella by Deborah Underhill with art by Meg Hunt. Yes, this is a children's picture book, and yes, I highly recommend it. It's an interesting take on the Cinderella story. The illustrations are adorable, and I loved the twist at the end. If my nieces and nephews weren't across the country, I would read this to them all the time. It's also written in rhyme, which adds to the fun. This week I also read A Close and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers, which is the second in the Wayfarer series. This book follows a couple of the minor characters from A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, and one out of two of them is a major plot spoiler for the first book, so I'm just not gonna say who it is. In any case, it has a lot of the same interspecies interaction that I really enjoyed from the first book, as well as interesting takes on ethics and life. I know some people tend to get scared about the second book in a series when the first book is absolutely glorious, but I feel like this one held up. The third in this series comes out next June and will be called Record of a Ship Born a Few. I think the plan is for a trilogy and I really hope she reconsiders and just keeps writing in this universe forever. If anyone knows of a petition, I'd sign it. But actually, Becky Chambers, do what you want. I'm just really enjoying your work. This week we finished the seventh season of The Walking Dead before my friend abandoned me to wander around Europe. Again, not like I'm jealous of his Swiss passport or anything. The non-linear timeline of the show, especially in the final episode of this season, really helps keep the audience on their toes. I found that it sometimes directs you to believe that one thing is going to happen, and then we kept coming up with hopes. There were also sequences where you had to decide if they were dreams or flashbacks and I felt it was a powerful end to the season. I'm also glad that the seventh season landed on Canadian Netflix before Chad ran away to Europe, because otherwise it would just be sitting there, waiting for us to watch it for whenever he stumbles home, which could be months. This week, the Tuesday Night Dinner Club watched episodes four through seven of Riverdale, and it would be great if the majority of the parents in the show could stop being absolutely terrible. Affairs, substance abuse, just being plain evil, and antiquated notions of what will the neighbors think. Seriously, just stop. I really hope that the parent with the substance abuse problem is able to get help and stay clean. Because at least their problem isn't that they're just straight up evil. That, I imagine, is a trait that won't go away. This week on Downton Abbey, we're in 1924 and all sorts of secrets are flying around. We learn about Baxter's secret that's keeping her under Barrow's thumb. We know he has a secret, but we don't quite know the scope of it yet. Secrets that we've assumed about Bates have come into question. Edith has a monumental secret she's keeping from the family, as does Mary. Someone from downstairs is dismissed due to a secret that would have been better left unanswered. This season in particular just has a lot of potential to explode. This week I watched the third season and the first four episodes of the fourth season of Orphan Black. I absolutely love the work of the lead actress, and it is so difficult to not spoil the reason why this show is amazing to those who haven't seen it before. It's also annoying that the show has one of those next time on Orphan Black clips at the end of the episodes, which totally spoiled the reason for Tatiana Maslany being so busy on the show for me. But whatever. I've grown so attached to these characters and I've already petitioned my library to get the fifth season of the show. I'm really hoping that the fourth season doesn't end on a cliffhanger, but I'll I'll know in six episodes. This week I listened to Waking Gods by Sylvain Nouveau, which is the second book in the Themis Files. The different characters in this audiobook have different voice actors, and it's just delightful listening. I feel like a lot of this week has been me in the middle of things, either in the middle of book series or in the middle of TV series. And I'm trying to be engaging about the content without spoilers. It's difficult. A lot happens in this book, to the point where if you skipped from the first book to the third book, you would have a very hard time grasping what you missed in the second book. If you like sci-fi and you haven't picked up this series, please do. Even if you don't think you like sci-fi, I think you might like this series. Only Human, the third and final book of this trilogy, comes out in May, which means I'm in the same boat with this one as I am with the Wayfarer series. And the Illuminae Files series, for that matter. Next year we'll see the conclusion of all three of these amazing sci-fi series. And although I'm sad they'll be ending, I'm excited to see what will happen in each of these worlds. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye.